So you know what we say on Coke and Strippers, to prevent juice jacking, use a USB condom all the time. Hi, I'm Monte, and welcome to the next exciting episode of Coke and Strippers, where you always get the full Monte. Today we're going to talk about how to keep your cell phones and other devices safe from certain kinds of attacks, hacking attacks, known as juice jacking, using a device called a USB condom like this one. And before we get started, I want to say thank you. Yes, thank you for watching Coke and Strippers, for liking it, for leaving comments, uh, for sharing it with your friends or with your enemies. It really helps. And before we can trust this USB condom, we're going to have to take it apart. The concept here is that your phone has a USB port, a serial connection of some kind, and that it can be attacked over that port. Somebody can try to hack it, not just over the Wi-Fi, but over this port connection. And if that occurs while you're plugging it up to get power, that's what we call juice jacking. Hopefully everybody knows Coke and Stripper's lab rule number one, but in case you don't, this is a poster I designed to remind you, related to USB thumb drives, which says, don't stick it in if you don't know where it's been. And our protection for cell phones and juice jacking is similar. So when you plug up your phone or other device to charge, I want you to think about what you are plugging it into. What is this thing? And where has it been? In particular, I did a DEF CON hacking talk several years ago about attacking USB. You can go back and find that online if you want. What could possibly be in here? Oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. Ask me, ask me, ask me. As a matter of fact, there could be a computer a computer that will talk serial data out this cable and try to attack your phone, try to put malware on your phone, try to steal contact information off or images. We've seen these attacks uh, potentially in the wild. And I believe every year now, DEF CON has their wall of sheep, or they also have their charging wall of sheep. If you go charge your device there in their free charging station, uh, it will attempt to juice jack your phone. So, what do we do? Well, one of the things that we can do is to use a USB condom, like this one. My buddy, Trooper BR549, uh, picked this up and we were at a security conference where I was given a presentation. So, the concept here is that when you connect this to your device, it will block the data connections while still letting the power connection through so that you can charge your device without exposing it to any potential data attacks from whatever you're plugging it into, whether this is a, a charger of some kind oops, or a wall jack or, or anything else because you really don't know what's in the box, what's on the other side of this connector. So on your USB connectors up through uh, USB 3, you have four different wires. You have a ground, you have a power, you have a data minus, this is D minus, and a data plus. So this concept says, let's allow the power wire to connect to your cell phone. On there. Uh, this is ground and this is your plus 5 volts. Let's allow them to connect while we stop, we block these two connections. If only it were that easy. The problem is, is that there are various different standards for the amount of power that you can provide. The original standard was uh, 500 milliamps, which is 0.5 amps. That's not a lot of power. I mean, it was enough for to, to power early devices, but things like the, the iPhone, the iPad, uh, various heavy-duty uh, Android devices and battery packs came along, and they need more current than that. Uh, so uh, Apple came up with a standard for their uh, iPhone that was a one-amp standard, and they would signal that the phone could draw this one-amp by connecting these data lines through 
um, a set of resistors. They're using a resistor divider that would set this data line that went to the phone. Actually, they do both of them to certain voltages. And so by setting one set of voltages using one set of resistors, these are resistors, you could specify that, oh, it's supposed to be, a, uh, this charger can provide one amp, and you, you can draw up to one amp. Um, they also came up with a standard for 2.1 amps, which used a different set of resistors. And this device could drop to 2.1 amps from this charger. And you may have run into a case where your smart device says, wait a minute, I'm not going to charge from this charger. This isn't an approved charger, or isn't the right charger, or, or I don't like the color of this charger, it's purple. And that's based upon the signaling primarily on these data lines. Later on, then they came up with uh, standards for things like battery chargers, where uh, it's really designed to charge a battery of some kind, or charge a battery in a device. And it's not going to have a data connection ever at all. You might actually have a data connection if this is a computer. And that computer might be able to provide different kinds, different amounts of power out its USB ports. I think the old standards were about one amp, uh, probably 0.5 amps. Long before there, you would negotiate those up. Uh, newer ones, maybe more. Uh, but if this is a charger only and there's not going to be data and it's designed to charge a battery then one of the standards says let's just connect these two wires together let's short them together and we could do a whole episode on the power charging standards and testing the power charging how to make things charge faster I did a lot of work with that uh, a few years ago uh, if, if you'd like to, to, to see a big discussion on what cables and chargers and combinations charge faster, uh, leave a note in the comments. Today we're going to use this thing to be air charge device. This is just a wireless router that I use to serve up files when I'm someplace where I'm not sure if there'll be Wi-Fi. In any case, the only reason I'm using this is because the battery on it is really low. So this is our stand-in for, for our cell phone today. Today we're going to use this device which monitors uh, charge voltage and current Hopefully the voltage should always be around 5 volts. It can get pulled down a little bit if there's a lot of current. And this is our current, in this case 0.87 amps or 870 milliamps. So when we're charging a device, since the voltage should be right around 5 volts, the amount of power that this device gets is based directly on the amperage here. So now we're going to attach this USB condom that I've got and see how it affects charge. So uh, in this charger, we still see about 0 0.86, 0 0.87 amps. So that's about the same. And if we go to this charger, we see 0 0.84, 0 0.86. So that's a significant increase. This device is charging much faster through this USB condom. Let's take this condom back out. If I can do this one handed and check this charge again without the condom it's in the 14 20 19 20 milliamp range so there's something about the protocol uh, on the data pins that uh, it actually likes through this usb condom better than it does being connected directly to that charger and that's interesting now in some cases that might be a problem because if this charger convinces your device to draw more power from whatever it's connected to then this can provide that could be an issue that could cause a problem but i know this charger here is rated at one amp so what's the issue what's our problem here we have this usb condom it's designed to stop data connections to air devices and protect them um, the problem is how paranoid do you want to be personally i get paid to be paranoid so i don't know what's inside this device. And you say, oh, it's kind of small. Well, it is small, but it's certainly big enough for a microcontroller, maybe multiple ones. It gets power. Yeah, there could be anything in here. So before we trust this device, we should see what's inside. Now, what do I hope is inside of this device? What I hope inside this device is basically nothing. I hope that 
the power connectors go straight through as we draw in our diagram, and that the data connections don't go through, uh, that they are shorted on this side to let a device think that it can draw uh, a, a current from a, uh, a power supply, or higher current, um, but that there's no connection through. So now, theoretically, there could be those pull-up uh, voltage divider resistors that would set the data lines to particular voltages, there could theoretically be a controller chip. There are some uh, controller chips that try to negotiate what these power rates should be. At this time, we'll try to be a little smarter about how we open this case rather than just cutting it open. Let's try a little applied heat. So we'll set this thing to, I don't know, couple hundred degrees. And we'll give that a shot. All right, let's try loosening this glue so maybe we don't have to cut this one open. Heat it up just a little bit at a time with this hot air rework station. All right, that's not working. So I'm just gonna heat this up and melt it out, pull it out, get it really soft. I'm up to about 330 degrees. Let's crank up a little more air. Oh, there we go. Just need to pull that off the back and we have our circuit board. Yay! All right, well that looks pretty good. The only thing I see in here are three resistors. There's no chips. Uh, nothing but those resistors and we can measure those and see what they are. Theoretically, you could put a chip inside of this connector if you wanted to go real uh, intelligence agency on it. But um, here's the easy place. Here's the obvious place. Actually, not only is it obvious, you know what would be, now that there are these connectors up here, you know what would be fun? <laughs> would be to put a malicious chip in there and then put it back together. <laughs> There's plenty of room. All right, for grants, let's see if we can get a multimeter on these and just see what the values are. That one looks like it's about a 61.8 kiloohm. R1, 61.8. R3. Looks like a 38.8 kilo ohm. And finally, R2. Uh, looks like about two and a half ohms, more or less. So all in all, I like this little device. Uh, it's a good concept. You shouldn't be plugging into strange ports with your uh, devices. You never know what's lurking behind there. Uh, there aren't any microcontrollers on here. That's a very good thing. I think I'll probably put this back together and put a little epoxy in the back here and fill it back up and uh, keep it in my kit. You know, in some circumstances, it can actually make devices charge faster. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for sharing it with your friends and your enemies. Uh, and until next time, remember to prevent juice jacking, Always use a USB condom.